Hello everyone, my name is Warren Wise, your PBS Digital Innovator of 2020. Each year, teachers are challenged with the task to develop engaging and innovative activities for students in their classroom. This year, with the sponsorship of South Carolina ETV, I'm here to share with you some of my activities that I've used over the years, not only inspire, but to help to transcend their educational career to the next level. With that said, let's take a look. Okay, everyone, let's start out with a math problem first. You're going to place six numbers on the board and ask the students to figure out the relationship between these numbers. The first numbers are two, four, and six. You're going to ask them to figure out the next three. If they can't, go ahead and write number four. Next is going to be number two. Stay tuned to receive the last number in this sequence. Remember, students have to figure out the relationship between the numbers. Until then, let's get started. With this activity, you're going to need three jars, three eggs, one spoon, salt, and a pitcher of water. You want to fill one jar with complete water, nothing else added to it. The second jar, we want to add water one third of the way full. Then add salt, almost to, to a point where it's saturated. Then you're going to carefully add an egg to that solution. As you can see, the egg is actually going to float at the top portion of your salt water solution. Then carefully add water to your desired level, preferably the same level that you have the jar with the water in. You will see that the egg is suspended between the surface of the water and the bottom of the tank. To make the water more dense, add salt to get your desired effect. For the activity, color crazy, we can do this several different ways. We're going to use a bag of Skittles, a regular dish or plate, and some water. First, we're going to pour the Skittles into our plate and make any type of pattern that we desire. Today, we're just going to use a circular pattern. After that, we're going to pour some water carefully into the middle of our plate. Once we pour our water into the middle of the plate so that it actually touches the actual Skittles in their pattern, we're going to watch and see how the colors are being displayed to the middle of the plate itself. For older students, you can use different forms of liquid and actually time them to see how long it takes for the colors to reach the middle of the plate itself, creating different forms of graphs or charts. In this activity, we're going to figure out how heat affects air pressure. To do this, we're going to light a tea candle and place it in our actual dish that has food coloring water mix. After that, we're going to place a drinking glass on top of our tea candle and observe what happens. From here, 
you would notice that the liquid is starting to rise inside of our drinking glass. You're going to ask your students, how does the air pressure change from inside the glass versus outside the glass? With this activity here, the magic tube, you're going to ask your students to see if they can solve this particular project here. As you can see, it's made out of PVC pipe and some nylon rope and actually tape on the end so the rope doesn't go all the way through. Now sometimes it actually does get snagged and the actual rope starts to coil up itself. But you're going to ask the students to draw a picture on what's going on on the inside of the actual tube itself. Students will have to come up with their own idea and actually describe what is the rope actually doing. Okay? After a while, the rope changes. Now the students have to draw you a different picture because one side is longer than the other. That wasn't there before, so how did that happen? Oh no, it changed again. To understand it, they should have their second picture to look like this. In this activity, Bending Life, we're going to use a water bottle filled with water that has a hole punch to it close to the bottom of the surface. We're also going to use a laser to emit light from the back end of the water bottle horizontally to the actual hole where the water is leading from the bottle itself. Here you can see that the actual light that's being emitted from the laser beam is actually following the path of the water. It's not really bending light, it's actually reflecting because water reflects both on its surface and below the surface. With this activity, I like to use a large bowl of warm water and some dry ice. You have to use proper gloves in order to handle dry ice because it is frozen carbon dioxide which is negative 78 degrees Celsius. Place the dry ice inside of the water. Then use this detergent and a water solution inside of the cup with a actual shoestring or some form of cotton material of your desire. From here, you want to mix some of the bubble solution around the rim of your actual bowl itself, not getting any of your, the solution inside of the water. From there, use your shoestring to go across the rim of the actual bowl itself to make a soapy film. This would trap the gas on the inside, creating your actual ice bubble. Ask your students, what type of gas is forming on the inside of the bubble? If they get it right, they may be able to do this. For this last activity, air cannon, we're gonna need two cups, one halfway filled with water, the other with a hole in the bottom as seen here. You also need one film of plastic wrap, a rubber band, a pair of gloves, and dry ice. To get started, you're going to place your plastic wrap over the top of the cup that has the actual hole at the bottom and use your rubber band to secure it.
make sure it's tight. Slightly pulling on the rubber band and the plastic wrap together. Next, you would need your glove to actually pick up the piece of dry ice. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide at negative 78 degrees Celsius. You want to place it inside of your cup that you just created with the film and the rubber band. From here, you want to get the second cup that has the water inside of it and actually pour it in the hose of your first cup itself. You don't need to fill it up, you just need enough for effect. By tapping the plastic part of your cup, a vortex is generated because the air leaving the cup at the center of the hole is traveling faster than the air leaving around the edge of the hole. Tapping the plastic of the cup creates movement of the air needed for the vortex to form and the tapered shape of the cup pushes the moving air together. Thank you for viewing today's segment. I hope this helps you to kick off the school year for students in your classroom. Oh, and before I forget, remember that number sequence that we had at the beginning of the video? Well, the answer is actually zero. It's all about finding relationships. When you get a chance, take a look at South Carolina ETV's website. They have a plethora of resources that educators and, like yourself can use not only in your school but in the school district and the community at large. Till then, this is Warren Wise, your PBS Digital Innovator 2020. And as always, remember to become better than you were yesterday. Thank you.